No. No, I don't I don't hear it. Okay, good. Okay, we are live. See everyone, we've already started talking. <laughs> me and Cheryl go way back. So it's like we can't stop and start the conversation right at 11 o'clock because I just adore Cheryl. And of course, oh. looking at all of the, the great food uh, that you've been posting on the timeline. But we are here to talk mm -hmm. about <laughs> the 2022 yes multicultural media luncheon first before yes. we dive in cheryl how are you how are you doing i'm good i'm good it's a it's a very busy time for me now it's like crunch time so you know it's pretty busy but i'm you know i'm used to it yeah i'm used to it yeah and it seems like you know you may say that but it seems like you may be busy, but you're always bringing on, you're always putting more on your plate, I'll say. I think, yes, insanity. <laughs> <laughs> it's called insanity. You just yeah. enjoy it. Hi, mm -hmm. Tisha. Good morning. Tuning in from Tampa Bay. Okay. Hi, Tisha. Hi. Oh, Good yeah. Morning. <laughs> we appreciate it we appreciate yeah. it welcome everyone i know we yeah, just started talking yeah. my name is robin kenny uh, president of motor city women studios and audio engineers of detroit and ever so often we do these conversations we we've been calling them from the studio but as you can see we are still doing everything remote um however you know, we're talking about the 2022 Multicultural Media Luncheon, which I've been going to for at least 10 years, at least. Wow. Um, I remember going to the luncheon when I was, you know, employed by someone else and being there uh, with an organization and then being able to be a sponsor uh, through my own organization is I'm just honored. You know, I've seen the luncheon grow over the years. And I'm always so proud of Cheryl and her team because every year you guys bring it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't do it without them. I couldn't <laughs> do it without the vendors. I work with a lot of small businesses. I I, I actually thought that uh, my business model was a little um, quirky, but it was what I had to do. So when I first started the luncheon, um, I actually was uh, kind of hanging out with some other business owners at a Panera Bread because <laughs> we were trying to use Wi-Fi, and uh, so, <laughs> and we were talking we about how uh, you know it's hard for a small business to really do business with large corporations. It's very, okay. very, very hard, especially if you have less than five employees. You know that you less than five full-time employees, and so when i came up with the luncheon i always made it a point to whatever services i had i would pull in a, a small business that could handle you know that fast pace mm -hmm. um you know being able to pivot really quickly and things like that and so um a lot of the, the vendors and companies that i work with they've been with me since day one mm -hmm. you know we've, we've lost one or two over the years um but overall the the small businesses that i work with and i you know i do pay them uh for their services they use this to say you know we you know are doing you know work for an event that's held during the auto show and that really helps them mm -hmm. to get you know more business from other companies so i used mm -hmm. to think it was kind of quirky and i think people made me feel that kind of way you know because they were like oh you're small but when you see our event it doesn't look small not you know? at all that was the whole premise behind it, you know, because I came from a background at BET and Vanguard and Vibe, you know, I wanted to be able to bring that same level, uh, but bring it, you know, with us from a small business. And, and mm -hmm. we've been able to do that consistently for 11 years. 11 years. Yeah, I knew it was, it was around that. Um, and, I, you know, I'm here to say, you know, I've gone to numerous of your events and I always mm -hmm. feel special and I, you know, feel like a star. And even if, even with last year, you know, in the midst of COVID, 
you guys were safe, you were responsible, there was a lot of communication, but we had a great time. But I'm sure it's it's not easy to to balance those two. Yeah, the the pro the COVID protocols really, you know, we had to, you know, come I think about every touch point, and I mean literally touch point mm -hmm. for people to, you know, come and feel comfortable as well as our celebrities to come to, you know, an event that's interacting with the public and feel comfortable. So it, it did take us a little bit of time. Um, I do have to give credit to like the younger uh, members of my team, the, the AG Young Techs who, uh, you know, came up with a lot of stuff where they said, hey, you know, let's use these QR codes. And yes. then another uh, one of them said, hey, we can't use uh, business cards anymore. We got to do, you know, this virtual uh, door prize where we spin the wheel. And it kind of felt like the price is right to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, but people liked it. It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a, I had a fun. great people time. Like, I see my name. And, you know, people liked it. But it was, it was touch free, you know, having the box lunches last year, you mm -hmm. know, people, you know, I'm sure they, you know, wanted something different, but we had to do that. You right. know, we had to do that so that people would feel comfortable. So now right. this year we are going to a buffet style lunch uh, where we'll have um, a buffet for people who have selected the vegan or vegetarian option. And then we have, you know, everyone else who selected just a regular entree. So it'll okay. still be self-serve, but it'll be a hot lunch this time. So that's that's uh, the change with the, with the food. The seating will still be the same. Okay. 10 people per table. Um, we ask that, you know, you wear your mask when you come in. You know, we have, you know, unless you're eating. So even though, you know, a lot of the COVID protocols have, you know, gotten a little lighter, um, we wanted, uh, you know, Mr. Paul to, 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 to feel comfortable and say, you know, when you're on the stage, you know, everybody will have a mask on. We, you know, we're mm -hmm. still, you know, doing everything as if it is still like in the height of COVID because we sure. want people to, to be safe. We want the guests to, to, to feel safe. We have lots of students that are going to be there. So, you know, we just have to, you know, do it that way. You mentioned Mr. Pa. Tell us about this year's keynote speaker. Okay. Well, Rich Paul is uh, what we call a super sports agent. Yes. Um, he has a very unique story um, in that, um, you know, he grew up with LeBron James as his friend and um, kind of learned the sports industry um, kind of, you know, Don traditionally. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he really was what we call a disruptor. He changed a lot of the 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 protocols and things in the sports industry. And they kind of mm -hmm. did it on their own terms and they've been profitable with it. So um, he is going to talk about in, in his fireside chat. We're going to talk about how, you know, he has built a disruptive brand. And as you know, the 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 outcome or some of the I wouldn't say side effects, but it's just something that kind of came from the pandemic is that, you know, everything has to be touch free, you know, right. or it's, it's got to be convenient. Just like we have meals on demand. Right. We've got video on demand. We've got, you know, everything has kind of shifted and um, a lot of companies. Uh, have been very profitable during this pandemic. And those are the companies that have really disrupted the industry. And if you're not disrupting or, or staying on top of what is, you know, trending, mm -hmm. you're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, what I, I really love about the Multicultural Media Luncheon and you and your team is that over the years, you've brought in such dynamic speakers to really talk about what's going on currently in our industry. So it's like you don't stay in a lane. Like there is no lane. Right. <laughs> I, I wonder if I was going to catch that. <laughs> there is no lane. It's like, you know, last year, Jamil Hill, phenomenal. And then see Rich Paul this year, um, um, Lonnie Love. 
you know, it's been so many different people. And it's like, even if you may not be in the media industry, you're going to get something from attending a multicultural media luncheon. Every single year, I either make a new connection, I have fun, you know, you get a, a dynamic speaker. So there's always so much to do and so much to listen to and, you know, so much to look forward to. Yeah, that's one of the 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 uh, main things that I wanted to uh, create when I, you know, kind of brainstormed of what I wanted it to look like. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want it to be, even though automotive is the core right. of the whole event, I wanted it to be where it had multiple touch points. So if mm -hmm. you were in the real estate industry, you could come because right. Alex Rodriguez was, you know, doing real estate. Um, if you were an engineer, you could come, you know, it just, it, it, it always was like, we wanted to pick a speaker, number one, that was relevant um, and that really had a good story to tell uh, for best, best business practices, life skills or information for the youth that come. Um, and then if you're just a regular fan, uh, like, mm -hmm. you know, what we have with, you know, Magic or Jamel, uh, mm -hmm. we had a lot of fans there. But when they yeah. came, they, they learned about people in the automotive industry that looked like them that were doing these great things and they had not heard of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've always tried to, you know, think out of the box and mm -hmm. create um, speakers and bring in speakers that generate interest. And then most importantly, because I am in the auto industry, generate car sales or have people come away and share that information with someone who might be looking for a vehicle because vehicle sales do keep uh, Detroit going. It's a, it's a primary business. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's the ROI for us. And mm -hmm. you know, we, we've, we've, we can credit ourselves with about 22. <laughs> <laughs> we do showcase. Uh, and that yeah. was something that I did not come up with. Uh, it was just one of the people who, um, and we've been doing it, I think, for like seven years. They just sent me their picture one year and said, I came to your luncheon and I was sitting at the table with, I think it was somebody at Ford or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then they went and bought a car and they sent me, wow. the said, can you show my picture next year? <laughs> We're like, okay, uh, sure. So right. then we started doing this and it just like, every year and what we noticed was that um there was one particular uh person who had bought a ford f-150 a female from atlanta mm -hmm. mecca mm -hmm. wilson and when we got the picture everybody was like wow she's driving an f-150 because she's really short you uh -huh. know? but i said you know what f-150 is targeting women and this is mm -hmm. proof that mm -hmm. women are buying this works. car and she's not, she's not a construction, you know what I mean? She's not, she's a, you know, business professional woman, but she loved big trucks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, it kind of helped with, you know, seeing people what they're buying and, and hoping that the car companies are paying attention to that, to see, mm -hmm. um, you know, what people are actually buying. These are actual consumers. I don't right. pay them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They just send send their pictures in so mm -hmm. that's, that's something that we like you know to add value for for our yeah. clients you know i really like you know when you attend the luncheon and i like when you guys show the different uh marketing campaigns and the commercials and things of that nature i love mm -hmm. seeing the people who've created these commercials and, and campaigns, you know, and initiatives. I think it all ties together with the multicultural aspect of it, saying that, you know, this didn't just create itself. There's a person who sat down and said, I want to reach, you know, or I want to represent my culture and how can I do this, you know, through this campaign. So I love seeing like, okay, this is an actual person that, it's creative and thought, thought about, okay, what, what, what was the messaging? And, you know, I love that part. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the luncheon is when you guys play 
the actual the campaigns. Spots. Yeah. Oh. So you can see like, oh yeah, I've seen that on TV. And then you see mm -hmm. the person that mm -hmm. created it. I think it all ties together. Yeah, I have to give a, a good credit or a lot of credit to uh, the journalists that um, I um, hire their uh, automotive journalists, bloggers from across the country, and their job is to keep a pulse on what is being shown on social media, on broadcast, what mm -hmm. people are talking about on social media, and they nominate the campaigns. I don't nominate them. <laughs> Because they you know, them. I just wanted to take myself out of that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Sure. And so I keep their identities anonymous because I want them to be comfortable in saying whether they like something or they don't like something. Um, and uh, and we have had some instances where there was like a TV commercial and it was supposed to target one community, and it ended up you know, connecting with a total different demographic. And this particular journalist was from that other demographic. And he said, in our community, we like this commercial, even though it's not for us, not for us. but we like it, you know? And so um, that's, you know, we, we, we try to keep that, you know, integrity of the mm -hmm. event, the luncheon, the awards. Um, we have visionary award for design and engineering. And that mm -hmm. is everything from, you know, the, the tech that is in the vehicles. This year, we've got some nominees that, um, you know, own automotive companies. Wow. We've got a, a nominee that uh, has his own charging station, uh, plugs in, which I had not heard of until a journalist wow. told me about it. Um, we have multicultural marketing, which are those marketing uh, professionals that help steer the campaigns that you see, which is the Multicultural TV Commercial of the Year Award, the Digital Media Campaign of the Year Award, which is social media, and then the Lifetime Achievement um, Award. So those are those mm -hmm. are the awards that we have every year, and the the journalists and bloggers um, nominate those, and then we create a ballot and send it out to a group of judges, and they um, can't be in the auto industry, you know, so they are business professionals, you know, some consumers and they vote. And then when we get to the event, we do it just like the Academy Award. We have somebody mm -hmm. read the nominations and, and open the um, envelope and you will be a presenter. Yes. I'm so looking forward <laughs> to being a presenter this year because yes. I always have so much fun. And last year, your event was one of maybe three that I attended in person. Because okay. I knew that it was going to be, you know, I thought I knew it was going to have fun, but I also knew that you and your team were going to make sure that everyone was safe. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel comfortable uh, mm -hmm. with coming. But yes, I'm honored to be a presenter this year and be part of the excitement. Um, and one thing that one of the benefits I know we talked about earlier, the benefits of attending me as a business owner is the networking but not only the networking, but just being in the room of, of greatness. You know, it is an intimate room. You know, it's, it's like we're all cheering for each other. My you, your table has great conversation. I know my table always has great conversation. And it's just a lot of fun. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that people look at this and not think, oh, I have to be in automotive to attend. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been going for, like I said, at least... No, at least yeah. eight, nine, ten, yeah, <laughs> ten years. Because I enjoy okay. it, you know. And you mm -hmm. know, Cheryl and her team, um, you guys always, always bring it. So I encourage entrepreneurs and small business owners, even if you haven't started a business yet, but you're thinking about starting a business, you you want to be around greatness. You you want to be around people who are creative, who are driven, and these are the type of people that come every year to the multicultural media luncheon. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to, which I always have to, we have to thank the sponsors that really provide the funding to help keep this going. Um, it, it's a very costly venture. <laughs> so, um, you know, having those sponsors that uh, believe in this product, mm -hmm. believe in the, the, the content that we provide and are willing to 
funded and, and support a, a woman-owned business is very important. So I'm going to read this list. Okay, read the list. <laughs> so we have for our sponsors for the 2022 Multicultural Media Luncheon, we have General Motors, Cadillac, uh, Fifth Third Bank, mm -hmm. Brand Marketing Agency Donor, Comerica Bank, North American International uh, Detroit Auto Show, Black Girl Food Critic, and ELE mm -hmm. Wealth Management. So those are our sponsors as of today. Wonderful. We still have um, a couple of companies that are looking to come in, and I'm okay. excited about that um, because it's important. Um, you know, a lot of companies talk about really supporting uh, minority-owned businesses, but you know the difference is made when you really write the check. You know, that's oh, of the course. Yeah, of course. Was, you know, I just got to be real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you can say it all day, but if you haven't really financially funded a, a minority-owned business, then you're not helping them. You're just yep. saying we're going to do something, and you're not really doing anything. Right. But these companies have supported my event. A lot of them have been with me multiple years and we really really appreciate uh the financial support that they provide so i had to send a shout out to them wonderful and you know another part of the event that i almost forgot about um mm -hmm. every year you guys always highlight young people like there's always either a presenter and i, I think last year a young person or high school person um, introduced Miss Hill. Am I correct? Yes, we have that every year. Yeah, yeah I knew it was uh -huh. something. It was always so that it, you know that energy and that like mm -hmm. having them see that yes, you can create something. You can be part of a campaign. You can do this. There's all these different industries in this room. So I mean, I think it's just a phenomenal event. Um, we're a little less than two months out now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. September 22nd, um, again, at the Garden Theater. And, you know, I think. Oh, yeah. You know so what? I, I got to Go jump in because we left out a piece. It is going to be live streamed as well. Oh, wonderful. So if you, you know, don't feel comfortable coming in person or if you're out of state and, and don't want to travel, uh, we do have a live stream passes. They're only $35 and that's, you know, to cover our cost for right. uh, the production of that platform, you know, being able to have somebody to, you know, run it and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we will be live streaming as well. And you can get your tickets at uh, ajamugroup.com, A-J-A-M-U-G-R-O-U-P.com. And it's my last name, group.com. Ajamugroup.com. Again, yes. it's September 22nd at the Garden Theater. If you don't feel comfortable coming in person, purchase one of the live stream um, tickets. Like I said, it's always fun. Um, even during the um, the pandemic, it was responsible. I didn't mind the box lunch. I really, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't mind it at all because I was just having so much fun. You know, Jamil was was fun mm -hmm. seeing the the campaigns, taking the pictures. It's just like the energy and the vibe of the room. You know, it's just always a lot of fun, and, and that's like I said, one of the few events that I've gone to. Um, consistently, you know, over the last 10 years. Yeah. So hats off to, to you and the entire Ajimu group team. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. for always mm -hmm. keeping the vibe high. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's always educational and I always leave inspired. So what are some of the, the things that people can, other things that people can expect um, think, this yeah. year? Yeah. Well, we always have, um, as I mentioned, the business card drawing for the door prizes. Um, so we always try to have some some unique door prizes. Um, we've got some spa packages from Christina's European Spa in Birmingham, Michigan. Nice. They have been a sponsor, a door prize sponsor for, I would say, at least seven years. Wow. Um, I think we'll have Capers this year, Capers Steakhouse, which is yes. Janina Jacobs. 
People love going there because she's got those delicious steaks. <laughs> <laughs> I tried them. <laughs> They're good. And uh, let's see what is. Oh, and then we um, have a social media post door prize. Okay. So that is uh, where we encourage people to post that are in person about what's happening at the event. Mm -hmm. And then someone from our social media team selects the, the winning post and they win a hundred dollar gift card from Ocean Prime Steakhouse in Troy. Wasn't that wonderful? And um, they have been uh, a partner with the Ajmu Group for, wow, I would say nine years. Oh, really? They, they, yeah, they've been a partner for um, a long, long time. Um and then uh, we'll be announcing it soon, but we do have a door prize from the Detroit Lions. So we'll be posting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have something from the Detroit Lions. We're had they're new. They have been. Uh, they've attended. I think they attended my event when Alex Rodriguez came. They did have okay. some it there. Sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, they wanted to um, make a donation as far as a door prize. So if they. We, we'll be announcing what that is uh, probably sometime next month. Okay. Um, and then we will be uh, also as a door prize, we will be giving out a Black Girl Food Critic gift card. Ooh. Our new branding. <laughs> I was just like to, I was just gonna say. Speaking of steaks, <laughs> let's talk about what? the new brand of Hajimu Group. Black girl food credit, you know, yes. if if you follow Ajimu Group or Cheryl personally, you've seen those delicious platters of food on your timeline. So tell us more about that brand. How did it get started and, you mm -hmm. know, what we can look forward to from it? OK, so it was kind of a, a, a pandemic, baby. So mm -hmm. um I've always, uh, for years since I've lived here, and I've lived here 25 years in Michigan, I would always try to support uh, Black-owned restaurants, um, like Waves Inn on Grand River. I think I've been going there ever since oh I got to Michigan. <laughs> that fish is so in. good. You know, so I've been, I grew up in Northwest Detroit, and but I haven't seen them open lately. And I'm like, what they're is not. Going on? I haven't seen them. Maybe I'm just not going by yeah, at the right time. Yeah, I think it's just on the weekends now. Okay, okay, that makes. I sense. think it's just Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Okay. It used to be, to I think it used to be Thursday, and then pandemic. But um, yeah, oh yeah, I understand. Yeah. So I've always, you know, supported black-owned restaurants. Um, I guess it's just you know how I was raised. You know, with grandparents that would end up LACP coming up in Operation Push, you know, as a teenager, we were always taught to support businesses in your community. I've always, you know, done that. And so when the pandemic struck um, and I was on a lot of mm -hmm. Zooms with a lot of organizations where they were trying to help um, small black owned businesses get ready to apply for PPP loans. Um, you know, I saw that frustration of, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get, you know, information in order or, you know, having the right P&L statements or, you know, just things like that. And they were saying, we yeah. just, we need people to buy food. You know, we need people to buy, you know. <laughs> right, so, right. <laughs> yeah, they were like, this is great, but we need people to buy. And so I yeah. um, was at a uh, art show with my friend Cheryl Heading Alexander. I was just helping her at her booth because I'm always helping somebody. And um, I told her, I saw Frida, mm -hmm. Frida Batitas. We were right across the street from her. I had never been there. And they said, it's black on, mm -hmm. it's like Cuban steaks or something, it's Cuban sandwiches. So I went over there, I got one, and I, I had uh, Cheryl's husband take my picture. And I said, I'm getting ready to start this food blog. It's called Black girl food critic. And they were like, what is this? <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna start rating this food. I'm gonna start promoting this food that I that I'm eating every week. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of like a play on words. I I don't like to say that I'm like being very critical. Um the whole right. por, the whole port uh, point of it is to promote. Uh, business right. that you know have really good food 
and they they may not have the budget to do right. uh, an ad you know mm -hmm. it's very costly you know even if you know fifteen hundred dollars to a small black owned business is a hundred thousand you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's, right it's, you know every dollar counts right and so um i started just going around once a week and i would visit different places i wouldn't say anything i would just come in buy mm -hmm. the food take pictures eat it um and then i would post it mm -hmm. and it just you know slowly started to gain momentum you know and then i started becoming a little more recognizable because i was trying to be kind of low-key right right and they were like there she is i was like where <laughs> <laughs> where i want to meet her too like, yeah who is she so um but yeah i started it because of that it's been a year yeah it's been a year oh since i God. started that and um since then you know i we've we've expanded uh you know i i also do black girl food critic in my hometown of memphis tennessee wonderful uh because my community friends was like why are you doing it up there you right so i said okay so eventually we want to um expand to you know chicago just go everywhere wonderful go everywhere. but you know cheryl you saw a need and said, okay, what can I do? You know what? I can go take a picture of me with their delicious food so people can see, oh, I didn't know that they sold this. Or I didn't know that, you know, that was, you know, locally owned or black owned. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's great. I, I think it, it, it speaks to everyone, the nature of saying, okay, I may not be able to do everything. I may not be able to solve all of the problems, but I can do something yeah all of us can do something because we we all have to eat and yeah, so you eat. know it doesn't have to be the most expensive i cover all price points you do i go everywhere i mean i'll go deep in the hood to <laughs> the fine dining mm -hmm. <laughs> go, i go everywhere and a lot all of people type of cuisines yeah. i saw you were at magnolias and i was yeah. like oh that looks good and that's really how i determine okay well what's a, a place i would like to try like i always go to your page because i know you've already been there and i can just see oh okay well this has some good chicken and waffles or this mm -hmm. has some good fish or mm -hmm. whatever so i encourage everyone to check out black girl food critic. yes we're on instagram black girl food critic all one word and um i usually post every week um, but we've, you know, we've, we, we primarily have been focusing like in the city of Detroit, we're starting mm -hmm. to venture out a little bit more. We've gone to Sterling Heights. And then, um, this past week, we, we traveled three hours to Grand Rapids to 40 acres. Oh, so food, I was yeah. there. The food was good mm -hmm. and the decor was beautiful. And mm -hmm. I, I just kind of was on my laptop and it came across like, and I said, wow. And it's on Wealthy Street. Which was I heard that. 40 acres on Wealthy Street. Yeah, it was just oh, yeah, great. There's there's a wealthy so, many, so many great places. So, so many great places. Um, for Black History Month, <clears throat> I came up with this idea where we would feature Black-owned restaurants that have been in business 30 years or more. Mm. And uh, that was, you know, an interesting assignment because I had to do a little bit of research. I think yeah. everybody knows Baker's Keyboard Lounge. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably one of the oldest, you know, restaurants in the U.S. But, you know, we featured Vicky's Barbecue, which I had mm -hmm. not heard of. But I Really? Oh, that. I remember going yeah. to Vicky's probably like 20 years ago. Really? And I was like, oh, my gosh, look at all this food. <laughs> this is too much. And it was so good very tender very tender <laughs> good very good tender. and then Extraordinary. Um, yeah and then you know floods which is you know the the mixing and hookup restaurant <laughs> <laughs> they got good food is that what we're calling it <laughs> if you want to network you want to hook up you want to meet somebody get you a table at floods just sit there to the bar <laughs> that's true that is so true actually mm -hmm. Floods has been around for a long time but what yeah. i love about that is that you know i think a lot of new restaurants get the shine and they get the attention 
but it's the restaurants that have been in business for 30 plus years yeah. serving our community and in our community that we need to show some show some love to as well. Yeah, yeah. And there are lots of them. There, there are there are so many of them. You know, now, where can we find that? Do we just have to go to your page or is there a list mm -hmm. that you guys have put together? We're working on like a comprehensive list. Uh, I don't want to give all my secrets. Okay, but, all right. <laughs> all right. We're working on a list. I'm asking too much. Yeah, we're working on a list. There's a couple of things we're working on. We've, we've, okay. we, complete, we completed a pilot. For a TV show, <gasps> really? Um, we're yeah, we're trying to um, get someone to pick us up. Netflix, call us. <laughs> <laughs> call me Netflix. Somebody, uh, Hulu, call us. <laughs> I love that idea. So yeah, we want to do that. Uh, you know, it's a lot of challenges with you know trying to do a, a TV production. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's a long term goal, and I've, I've, I'm always a big believer in. You got to really, you know, make your goals where they seem unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And then you really work hard to 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 make it come true. So, right. you know, if you would have told me 20 years ago, I would be having an event during the auto show when I used to just go, you know, and and just go to the cherry preview. I right. was an employee. I didn't. Right. You know, I would have laughed like, oh, I'm not going to have. But here I am. Look at you now. Years later. Yeah. With just an idea that I said, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I think it's something that, you know, can be done. And, Definitely. and it's been, yes, it's been sustainable. So. Yes. And all great things start with an idea. That's all you need is an idea. That's that's the start. Um, mm -hmm. But again, September 22nd at the Garden Theater for tickets, visit ajamugroup.com. Ajamugroup.com, A-J-A-M-U group.com. Also follow on um, Instagram and Facebook for Black Girl Food Black Critic. Black Girl Food Critic. Yes. yes. Instagram, you yes. must follow those. <laughs> I follow both pages because if I miss something on one timeline, I'll see it on another timeline. So Cheryl, thank you again for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this very much. It is my pleasure. Looking forward to seeing you in person um, in a couple of months. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>